This is the last section in the vectors chapter, chapter 12, applications to mechanics. So you're probably going to find a lot of stuff in this section overlaps with what you do in the um, stats and mechanics book. Uh, same types of questions. So they're going to be questions to do with forces. So remember when you're dealing with forces, we've got like our F equals MA. There may be some stuff to do with SUVAT. And just remember that you can link SUVAT and forces with F equals MA. Yeah, pretty straightforward section actually. Okay, just one example. So part A is find a resultant. That means find the sum of the forces. So result just means the sum of what you get. Now, I would probably find it easier if they were in a column. You don't need to. I'm going to write it in a column anyway to add them together. So 2, negative 1, 2, plus um, negative 1, 3, negative 3. And then F3 is 4, negative 3, negative 2. So that gives you F1 plus F2 plus F3. So I'm going to get in the top row 2 minus 1, which is 1, plus 4, 5. And negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. Neg minus 2, which is negative 3. So that's the resultant force. So that's what R is. Um, I suppose they want it in the form I j k because that's the form it was given in part b find the acceleration of of the particle right we're given the mass of the particle up here so we just use f equals m a using vectors so the resultant force is this five and i probably prefer to do it as a column 5 minus 1 minus 3 equals the mass 0 0.5 times by the acceleration which is going to be this pqr so if i times both sides by 2 i'll get 10 negative 2 negative 6 equals pqr pqr so then i can write down my final answer as 10p minus 2q minus 6r and that's the acceleration in meters per second squared find the magnitude of the acceleration so um, that's just finding at the size of that vector using Pythagoras so 10 squared plus negative 2 squared so we're up to 104 plus negative 6 squared so we've got 104 plus 36 so we're root 140 uh, i'm guessing we'll write the answer we can leave it like that let's see if it simplifies so 2 root 35 let's do it here 2 root 35 and that as a decimal, if we need it, three significant figures, 11.8. So that's the size of our acceleration. Again, meters per second squared. And then finally on part D, find the distance traveled uh, by the particle in the first six seconds. So anytime you're asked to work out distance, time, velocity, you're going to be using SUVAT. Now, just before that part, it says given that the particle starts at rest. OK, so that means that U is zero. So what have we got for SUVAT? S, U, V, A, T. So time is six. That's a scalar. Our acceleration, well, we've worked out the magnitude of that so we can use this 11.8 we'll use the exact value in a minute it starts from rest and we want to find s so that means we're going to use s equals ut p 
plus half a t squared. So s is what we want to find. U is zero times by six plus half times by a. Now that was 11.8. That was at two root 35. What was in it? Or root 140. So two root 35 times by six squared. So we don't even need to rearrange anything. We just get the answer. So a half times by two root 35 times by six squared. And I get 36 root 35, 36 root 35. And um, as a decimal, that's three significant figures actually becomes two, one, three. So let's write down two, one, three. That's three significant figures. And since we're working out a displacement, that's going to be in meters. So let's just highlight those answers. So there's part A, there's R, part B, there we go, either one of those. And then part C, there's our answer there. Right, uh, so this is the um, last exercise, actually of the last chapter. So you should be able to work through the exercise 12D on pages 348 to 349, after which you could then do the mixed exercises and then the review exercise.